Rick Schwartz has been on a roll lately. He's promoting leases of his category killer domain names as he has been doing for years and is seeing great traction. Today, we're going to talk about his joint ventures business and how you can get in on the action if you have the right domain names. Stay tuned. Three messages before today's interview educates and motivates you. First, if you're a domain name investor, don't you have unique legal needs that require domain name technical know-how and industry experience? That's why you need David Westlow of Wiley Ryan. Go search for David Westlow on Domain Sherpa, watch his interview, and you can see for yourself that he can clearly explain issues, can help you with buy-sell agreements, deal with website content issues and UDRP actions, and even help you write your website terms and conditions. David Westlow is the lawyer to call for internet legal issues. See for yourself at newmediaip.com. Second, managing multiple domain name marketplace and auction site accounts is a pain. Inevitably, you forget to sign into one and you lose a great domain, or worse. Now imagine using a single, simple to use, and comprehensive control panel to manage all of your accounts. That's Protrata. You can set up search filters, analyze domains, automate bidding, list domain names for sale, buy domains across all major marketplaces. Protrata also has a new semantic engine that builds Google-friendly websites with rich content and network feeds. Sign up at Protrata.com to get 20 free credits and start building and monetizing your domains today. Finally, if you have questions about domain names, where should you go to ask them? The answer is DNForum.com. Not only is DNForum the largest domain name forum in the world, it's the best. You can learn about domain names and the industry, buy and sell domain names, talk about the domain name news that's happening in the industry, and even meet domainers just like yourself. Register for a free DN Forum account and begin advancing your skills and knowledge today. And when you do sign up, send me a friend request so we can connect on DN Forum. Here's your program. Hey everyone, my name is Michael Seiger and I'm the publisher of DomainSherpa.com, the website where you come to learn how to become a successful domain name investor or online entrepreneur directly from the experts. Some of us are fortunate enough to own some tremendous online properties, what people call category killer domain names. And when I say some of us, I don't mean me. But what defines a category killer domain name and how can you maximize the return on your investment? Today, we're joined by Rick Schwartz, a previous domain Sherpa, co-founder of the Traffic Conference, founder and CEO of eRealEstate.com, a domaining icon, and the man known as the Domain King. Rick's going to share how he's maximizing his return on his investment and how we might be able to use his skills for mutual benefit. Rick, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Rick, jointventures.com. You've owned it for years, but you've recently relaunched it with a long copy, sales-oriented website about domain name leasing. What's the idea behind jointventures.com? Well, um, it, it, it uh, kind, of, kind of evolved because it was just something um, that I set up with uh, Danny Welsh, that, uh, a guy that I met back in uh, April for the first time, where we had contact for the first time, and he had an idea. And uh, it, it was just, uh, I had been sending my traffic to uh, worksmarter.com, mm -hmm. and he saw what I was doing, and uh, it was just something to solve a problem that I had. So uh, uh, he uh, obviously is an old school uh, uh, copywriter, as you can see, at, uh, uh, with some experience. And uh, it's like, okay, well, l let's try marrying uh, an old medium with a new medium and, and see what we have. Yeah, and, and I love and, that uh, about you. You're never afraid to try new things with your, with your properties. So you just met him. You were talking about domain names and joint ventures came up. And he said, hey, I'm, I'm an expert on long sales copy type websites that many of us see on the on the web that are used today and and he said let's work together on this and see if we can drive some more business for you on some joint ventures more or less he uh, he kind he emailed me back in April and he told me he had been trying to contact me for a year or two and uh, we developed the conversation and uh, uh, I think by July we were kind of on target to do this test and that's what we're we calling it and that's what it is it's a test we're just 
we try different things because obviously I have problems of my own that I want to solve and that's where joint ventures came from is I mean I have domains that I know are worth thousands of dollars a month in the right hands mm -hmm. but I may be making thirty a month or three dollars a month or three thousand or, or three hundred whatever the number is I know it's not the highest and best use of any property that I have so one by one I'm hoping to expand what I've done with uh, um, candy.com and property.com and um, uh, punchbowl.com and love.com and a few others that I, I can't even mention um, and, and at least a half a dozen that I'm uh, uh, actively working on putting, putting agreements together that are, are long term and you got to remember some again strictly for uh, trying to um, um, fix a void and a problem that I had and then all of a sudden we realize, my goodness, this translates to so many different people. And uh, uh, we're not even opening until December 1st, and I think a couple of people blogged about it, and uh, the cat kind of got out of the bag, and uh, before we knew it, we had people contacting us, and, uh, uh, and, and I did define what I'm looking for, and, and the only domains that you know this is truly applicable for are category defining domain names that you would see in a Yellow Pages. And, you know, I'm sure everyone's okay. laughing at me. Oh, Rick, he's from the old school Yellow <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you're old school. But you know what? I, I run a publishing site, and half of my advertisers are still paying for their Yellow Pages ads. So, you know, I, I think a lot that's lost on a lot of people, that you're defining it a certain way. And majority of the world still defines it that way, even though us on the Internet have looked at it as being a dead industry. Right, and, 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 and if nothing else, at least it's a starting point, and, and it's the, the, many of the sectors that have been here for a very long t uh, time that probably aren't going to go away that quickly, and you may not have thought of, and it's just uh, a yeah. great reference point. And of course, there's no new terms coming out every single day. I, I, we probably couldn't even count how many new terms are coming out every single day. Right. So, so uh, you've said the time has come, Rick. You've posted that on your blog. The time has come for domain leasing to become more widely accepted and utilized by businesses. Why is now the time? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's true because this isn't anything that I haven't, A, been doing since 1997 when I did my first leasing deal. But the headwinds between 1997 and 2012 have been very strong when it comes to leasing. I mean, I've been able to carve out a couple of nice deals, but the, the, the headwinds were strong. Now it's come to the uh, point where I think people realize, okay, they're not going to be able to get, get these great domain names, mm -hmm. but they have an idea. And if their idea hits, it's going to trump whatever the expense is. It's like, you know, I may quote my normal quote for just a, an off-the-cuff domain name would be maybe $1,500 a month. Mm -hmm. And if that's an outrageous sum, I say, you mean your idea is not capable of producing at least $18,000 a year in profits? I mean, at the end of the day, that's a pretty low bar for a category-defining domain name. So I, I just see a correlation. And then you saw where I uh, posted the numbers on... Uh, what real real estate is mm -hmm. for, and, and these prices are astronomical. And when you look at what the, the, the small area that a Fifth Avenue store can service compared to what a dot-com can service, it's like, I must be missing something. But, but right now, after all these years, the resistance level to leasing a domain name for a fixed monthly fee is something that's palatable. It's very, listen, it's hard to sell a three and a half million dollar asset. It's not that hard to rent or sell ad space in your magazine for $5,000 a month for a year mm -hmm. or two years or three years. And guess what? If the magazine ad really works, where else do you have the uh, possibility to buy the magazine? I mean, that's the beauty of it. I mean, not everyone wants the magazine. They just want to lease it. They have an idea. It's going to work for X amount, of, whatever it is. Everyone comes to it with, with different intentions and different motives, but there's opportunity there. Whichever way it goes, there's an opportunity, and they get to define the opportunity. And if their definition meets with what I'm looking at and, and my vision, then we have a marriage. And yeah. it, it goes, like I said, it's just a lot easier 
to rent something for a couple of grand a month than it is to sell something for several million dollars. Definitely. So I look at analogies like that, Rick, and my next question was going to be, what are the benefits to uh, to businesses? But but before I ask you that question, you know, I look at analogies like that and you say things like people will pay $5,000 a year to be in a magazine, but they won't pay $5,000 a year to lease a domain name, which is probably true in a majority of the cases. But paying $5,000 a year in advertising the magazine, the publisher is guaranteeing that that magazine will be in the hands of a reader, whether they open it or not, whether they read the magazine, whether they look at your advertisement, they're that remains to be seen, but they're guaranteeing that. And when I pay a thousand dollars a square foot to be in Times Square, I think Times Square might even be more expensive than a thousand a square foot. Well, I think um, it's said one hundred a foot, actually. A hundred. Twenty one hundred. Twenty one hundred. Right. And and Hong Kong is now the most expensive at like twenty five, twenty six hundred. Go to ricksblog.com right. to see Rick uh, cite the numbers there. When I look at that, they're, you're basically guaranteed a certain number of people walking in front of your store to see that brand. And I think business owners are going to say, if I buy lawyer.com, I'll just throw that out. I am going to have a great brand, but how many people are actually going to be walking by or getting my magazine? And that remains to be seen. You know, it, you, maybe you can cite some numbers well, on well, how many well, people type second. it in. But wait a second, they don't walk by. It's your magazine. They walk in the door. They type in the minute they type in lawyers.com. That's your customer walking into the reception area. You're not advertising to them. You got a customer. Right, but how many people are typing in lawyers.com? If you ask anybody that owns a domain name, they either won't give you the information or the information just isn't very good. Well, usually when they won't give you the information is because they're it's zero <laughs> right <laughs> so, so let's start there usually it's zero and if you know there's no reason to give information to another domainer okay but I know from from the domains I have I mean look lawyer.com I can guarantee you gets if not hundreds and thousands of type a day if not tens of thousands of type a day so now you have you know, again, your proverbial uh, pizza stand, do you want it in Oshkosh or do you want it on the boardwalk where everyone's, uh, you know, going on the Ferris wheel? And, and if you're talking about lawyers.com, believe me, it's coming with qualified uh, traffic all day, every day, guaranteed for the, as long as the Internet lasts, which is going to be longer than we last. So the comparison between domain names and the magazine or the location in Times Square, Rick, is you're saying that you are uh, guaranteeing traffic. That when you and sell a, 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 when you lease a premium category killer domain name, it's coming with some traffic. So people are buying the traffic essentially, whether it's guaranteed or not, like you give some figures and I'm sure it fluctuates over time, but they, they get that traffic and they get the branding also of, of being able to promote such a simple domain name. Right. It, it, look, depending on the, the category and the size of that category and, and how uh, targeted that particular domain name is, mm -hmm. look, it's going to get anywhere from a few visitors a day, three, five, ten, which has value, which right now we're getting pissed away, mm -hmm. or it could come with hundreds and or even thousands or tens of thousands. And I have all of them up and down the scale, so I understand it. Look, I have... Um, I would say two of my least performing, underperforming domains that I've had for many years are tradeshows.com and specialties.com. Okay, specialties.com. You know, th that's a large sector, okay? It gets probably 300 typings a day. 300 typings a day. It makes virtually spit on PPC. But I can't believe in my P brain that uh, a, a domain like specialties in the right hands of someone that deals in specialties can't increase their business uh, and, and bring it to another level, okay? And, and, and I take specialties because that's one of the worst ones I have. It probably makes 30 cents a day, $9 a month. Come on. I mean, <laughs> and, and trade shows is another one. And trade shows goes through spurts. Sometimes it can make 10, 20, 30, $50 a day, and sometimes it's going to make 10, 20, 30, 50 cents a day. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I understand now, Rick, th that you're basically leasing the traffic to them rather than sending it to some other site, rather than showing domain parking ads on there where you're getting you know, a, a pittance for what's being collected or you're not able to monetize it. You're basically saying take the targeted traffic that's coming to that 
and lease it out to other people. And they should find benefit from that. If they're buying advertising, now they don't have to buy advertising or they don't have to buy as much advertising. They don't have to be beholden to Google's fluctuating ad rates. Look, everyone, every business owner has to ask one question. How much is a new customer worth to me? It's a very simple question. I don't care what business you're in. How much is a new customer worth to me? Mm -hmm. How much is a new customer worth over the lifespan of that customer? Some of those can be five years, 10 years, forever. How much is uh, the value of a customer? And that's what the type in traffic offers, no matter what level or, 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 or what category you're in, you have a pre-qualified person who obviously hasn't found what he's looking for at Google or anywhere else, and he's forced to type it in. It's like, geez, I can't stand getting the same damn results all the time. I mean, how, how, how many biz rates do you want to pop up on, on your screen, for God's sakes? I mean, I do my searches. I mean, you know, I, I either get some silly site or a guy, you know, who has uh, a mesothelioma, blah, 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 and he's, you know, hit the search end. I mean... People are frustrated. That's why there's typings to begin with, and it's human behavior trying to yeah. human nature just trying to to go directly and find something like that. There's a whole subculture of people that do that. Maybe it's because they were they grew up with the yellow pages. I don't know, but they did it with 800 numbers, and they do it with dot coms. They don't do it too much with dot whatevers, though. <laughs> That's true. All right. Um, any other benefits to leasing? A domain name versus purchasing a domain name that that come off the top of your head that you cite to people when you have a conversation with them. Well, they're they're not going to like the price. First of all, I don't when I answer an email, I don't sell domain names. I just don't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something over that hump. I mean, I've sold you know 18 domain names now, but I'm not looking to sell. So I'm looking for energy and passion and know-how. And sometimes it comes with them with money in their pockets, and sometimes it just comes with the energy and the passion, more like the candy.com guys. So it, it's coming one way or the other. So yeah. it's either an established company or it's a guy with a dream and an idea. And I like dreams and ideas. And, 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 and they know they could never afford the domain name. They know it's gone. They don't have it. But that's the perfect domain name. You know, there's only one piece of the... Of, puzzle that fits perfectly. I mean, you can make lots of things fit, but only one fits perfectly. And some people, and to people, you know, when you're in marketing, that's everything, that perfect piece of the puzzle. Yeah, but people in marketing love their brand. They love to say that they're etoys.com, not toys.com. And But brand, listen, that's where this is all crazy stuff. Branding is a result of sales. You don't go out to brand something. You brand it because you sold a million of your items. And everywhere you go, you have your brand out there because you sold a million items, not because you told a million people your name and no one bought anything. That's why it's so screwed up. I mean, think about it. It's the new math. I mean, branding it does not come down to, I mean, look, there is a, a mega company can afford branding. What does that mean? That means a, a company like Tiffany or whatever company can afford to have a, le a flag leader store on Fifth Avenue, even if that store loses money, or the Gap, or or whatever, or Apple. That store is a flagship store. It can lose money. It's an advertisement. It's a billboard. They have 500 other stores that can support it. So there's lots of different reasons that people do things. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Before we get into the tactics here, Rick, and, and understand a little bit more, I want to ask you, I want to make the comparison between real property and internet property or, or virtual property. So property or land rental, uh, property or land, and then renting or leasing it has been around for hundreds of years in the U.S., thousands of years around the world, pretty much as, as long as land ownership has been around. It's been leased and rented. In contrast, domain name properties have only been around for about 20 years. If I'm going to buy a nice well-located $300,000 house on Bainbridge Island where I live, I've got a fairly good likelihood of leasing it out for about $1,500 a month and getting a 6% annual return on my investment. It's pretty good in today's time. Um, and maybe even a little bit more if the economy comes back in five years or so. And I know it's oversimplified because I have to pay property taxes, but I also get some deductions, yada, yada. But the property may appreciate 
maybe not in today's economy. How does real property scenario compare to domain name property? I know that you've bought a lot of your domain names uh, years ago, a decade ago, more than a decade. But if somebody's spending $300,000 today on a domain name, do you think that they can lease it out for $1,500 per month relatively easily? I don't think you can go in business today and uh, quite like that and buy a domain for $300,000 and lease it out, and I, I don't think that works. Mm -hmm. But um, Mike Birkins bought a, a domain last year or, or a couple of years ago at Traffic, and you know people didn't thought, think it was a very good domain name. But it was a category. which was called thermalscanners.com. You know, it's a category. It's a med in medical. It's, it happens to be a big, expensive category. Thermal scanners. Right, thermal okay. scanners. You know, they've been around for about thirty years, or maybe maybe a little bit more. Yeah. But it, it, it's an important sector, and it, I think he bought it for a thousand or two thousand dollars. That's the kind of, of domain that I still buy to this day. You know, domains that are five hundred, a thousand, two thousand dollars. That I see that there's someone on the planet that could have a use for that that could actually pay me a thousand or two thousand dollars a month. Buying a, a domain for three hundred thousand today, and then thinking I can turn around and and lease it for you know, that's a real that's a much tougher bridge to 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 get over. Okay, and that isn't our business model. But there are people that do have three hundred thousand dollar domains that aren't making any money with it, and this is an opportunity for them to uh, uh, <coughs> at least have a an, an end game. Yeah. Okay. So it's not necessarily the the value that you're paying to be able to uh, get no, it's a real, decent it's, return on your investment. It has more to do with what you mentioned earlier, the traffic that's coming to that domain name. It's all yes. Yeah, it's all about traffic and relevance, and if it's category defining, right. and there are new categories getting born all the time. I mean, you know, the, it's just a fact. There are new categories. I mean, the yellow pages is the starting place. But if you were to see the yellow pages today in its current form, it would probably be like this huge because it's a different world. But that's a starting place. It's a starting place so they could, you can visually see what does a category defining name look like. Yeah. Look at the headings. That, okay. That's where you start. So, so let's talk about these category defining domain names. You know, plumbers is in there. Pest control is in there. Um, marketing is in there. But... There's only, you know, there's probably uh, 300 categories in the yellow pages, and you're not necessarily using that yellow pages uh, as a an exact description of the category defining words. You're saying if you can look in the yellow pages, and if you were to update it for today, there might be different categories. Well, no. Look, even in plumbers, you still have subcategories of plumbers. What kind of plumber do you need? Do you need an outdoor? Do you need an indoor? Do you need a, a plumber for your pool? Do you need one for your heating, for your air conditioning? You know, there, there are ca ca subcategories inside of the categories. They all work. They all work. We, we know the, the better you target in, on the Internet, the better you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So they all work, but it's a starting point. It's a difference between... Just putting a bunch of words in a dot .com and then actually seeing a, a category written down in the yellow pages and adding a dot .com, that's verified, validated, I, and you're going to have type in traffic. If it's in the, it's going to have type in traffic. All right. So that's great for the people that, oh, much. I'm sorry, go ahead. Now it's just a matter of how much because it depends how big the audience is, how big the sector is, how profitable it is. Right. Okay. And I want to ask you about volume and, and uh, being able to monetize it and then how to determine a lease from that. But before we get there, so you're saying category defining domain names, exactmatch.com. You, you're only .com. It's not dot .whatever. There, there's, if it was a single word, possibly on another extension, I, I'd have to look at it on a domain by domain basis but as a rule dot com dot com only dot i mean i i have variations of the same domain with dot com dot tv dot org dot net and i know the numbers <laughs> and and no no one's going to lease the other ones there's no market for it maybe there will be in another 20 years mm -hmm. okay but in this next 20 years i don't see it yeah all right so 
there are, let's say, 500 categories or 1,000 categories listed in the phone book, yellow pages, all of them have been taken. So people getting into investment today either need to approach those people and purchase it off of them. And a lot of domain investors have unrealistic uh, expectations for the pricing of their domain names or they, you know, what have you. But as you say, new new categories are being defined every single day almost. So if you look at Mike Birkin's example, uh, thermalscanners.com, I wouldn't open the yellow pages today and probably see a category for scanners and then a subcategory for thermal. Um, so how do I know if a domain name is a category defining domain name using that example? Well, you kind of got to know. I mean, but you know, I, I, but 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 let me let, let me take it a little further. I mean, you have a category um, in the yellow pages, but now you know with the new medium, you can also add okay, New York plumbers. So now you become geo plumbers. You have New York plumbers. You have California plumbers. You have Miami plumbers. You so th there's you know huge amounts of opportunity inside the each side of each sector. Right. So, okay, so now you have Miami Plumbers. Okay, it's definitely not as big as plumbers.com, but it's absolutely more targeted. And if 25 people a day type in Miami Plumbers.com, that's pretty good because I guarantee you the guy isn't getting 25 calls a day from his yellow page ad. 25 customers a day is a lot of people if you're in business. You know, we all talk about numbers, oh, millions of hits. And let me tell you something. When you're sitting in a retail store on your ass all day long for 12 hours or 16 hours and you get six or eight people in your store for the whole day, then you understand the value of a customer. Then you understand why these people are blowing more sales than they're actually making because they don't take those customers seriously. But when you have six customers walking in your door, believe me, when they leave and you didn't sell them something, you're asking yourself, why didn't they buy something? Did I... Did I say something wrong? Didn't I have the item? Was my price too expensive? You don't just blow it off and say, oh, well, and go to the next guy. You don't do that. You really think, why did I not make the sale? I wish more business owners thought like you, Rick, because their <laughs> customer service is not at a uh, high point in a lot of businesses' priorities. And, and if they did focus on the customers that walk in the door and focus on that sales, I think that a lot of people would appreciate how much work goes into a sale and then looking at the five or 10 leads that can come through a website would have a lot more value as well. Because they don't know value. Right. Look, I'm sure you've been at a cash register at a store and you're giving the girl or the person the, the money to buy uh, an item for $100, the phone rings, they drop you like a hot potato when they talk to the person on the phone that isn't make it. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> they at least put the guy on hold. I'll be with you in a minute and grab your hundred dollars. You're more important. You're there. You're the customer. And and, and who hasn't had that experience? I yeah. mean, I'm sure everyone watching this has that's happened to over the years. Yeah, definitely. So I'm understanding that uh, the volume that's coming through that domain name is the value. So people are actually typing in MiamiPlumbers.com, going to that website, and if you were operating Joe's Plumbing out of Miami directing them to your website and having a big phone number or a contact form or a text me or a help my pipes just exploded button would be a benefit because you're going to get more business from that and and you can justify that but how do you as the owner of miamiplumbers.com rick for example I don't how do have you determine the lease amount for that first of all i don't own my am i know miami plumbers. that's why i say for example so whoever owns it i just made you some money <laughs> Uh, what, what was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. So how do you, as the fictitious owner of MiamiPlumbers.com, value the lease amount per month to a company in Miami? I just look at a retail space. How much is retail space in Miami? That, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I mean, if a guy wants to open up a real world business, brick and mortar, it's going to cost him a thousand bucks a month by accident. So, you know, that's the, that's the parallel for me, and it always has been, and it, 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 nothing else matters. There's a parallel there, and whether people uh, uh, are ready to accept the parallel, at some point, that parallel will intersect with reality. Right. And so, I get that. Like, if, I'm, uh, if I have a friend that's, uh, that's making um, beautiful purses, I actually have a friend that makes beautiful sort of organic purses out of uh, used uh, leftover pieces, and they're, they're beautiful. If she wants to go 
get a retail space downtown Bainbridge Island, she's going to pay at least $1,000 a month. And she wants to be in the foot traffic area where people are walking by and they got the impulse buying. And she can only be in one geographic area. She's not in Seattle. She's not in Miami. And and so that's tough. It limits it. Where if she owned purses.com or owned the traffic coming into purses, that would be uh, all of those people are potentially interested in her beautiful purses. But for the plumber in Miami who doesn't have a retail space that buys the Yellow Page ad because he wants to be located there, that also has a website because he knows that he needs to have one, um, how, do you, how do you figure out a value to him? Well, it depends how his advertising model. Okay, at the end of the day, it's, it's all about advertising. If he's a big billboard guy, for instance, mm-hmm. you know, some domains just look great on a billboard. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, look, it's about the radio test and being memorable and easy to spell. You got to, uh, you have to gear things to, uh, they say, like a sixth or eighth grader because that's the average spelling that the average person has. We don't, we don't spell well. It's just a fact. So some things just look good on a billboard. So someone uh, could have an advertising program that that domain is just a perfect fit. You know, and, and it's memorable, and it's easy to spell, and he knows it's going to increase his business. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's the only reason anybody would be interested to begin with. It will increase his business. Uh, word of mouth advertising, which you still don't hear much about on the internet, because mm-hmm. you hear about it, you have likes and stuff, right. is still the greatest medium in the world. Word of mouth advertising. And my wife, Alina, had a great idea the other day for Facebook. You know where they have the likes? She said they should have a, bu- a button for dislikes just as well. Great idea. I can't believe they don't have a dislike button. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> I digress. No. So the last <laughs> time you were on Domain Sherpa, I think I titled the show um, Patience is a Virtue That Leads to Millions. Your MO is to own your premium category defining domain names and just wait for the right opportunities to come. People will email you, they'll say, Hey, Rick. How much for this domain? You'll say, not for sale. They'll write back and say, come on, Rick. Can we do something? You'll say, how about a lease? And so you'll try and work it into a lease. You'll try and, um, uh, if you do sell, you'll try and uh, uh, get a piece of the equity like you've done, I believe, on propertyproperties.com. Yes. So how do you decide, you as the investor, decide if you're going to sell it, which you have done, you said uh, a number of times over the past uh, 20 years, lease it, or sell it with a piece of equity? Well, that's where the conversation comes in. You you email, you begin a relationship, you begin a dialogue. They emailed you because they had an idea. Okay? They, they, they didn't do it for their health. They, they had an idea. Okay, well, at some point, you start laying your cards on the table, hopefully. Mm-hmm. If not, then you just, you know, everyone... <laughs> Well, you say go to hell, and that's the end of it. <laughs> but but hopefully you have a more productive conversation. And you know, I always say the best thing is just lay your cards on the table. Let let let's try to make the best hand with the cards that you have dealt, and and see how we can marry it together. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I find that that works well because they have an idea. They have a money making idea. Mm-hmm. And my, my big job is to make sure it's not a, a lemonade stand. That it, that it's a Budweiser. You know, that it's that that it's a big idea. That it's uh, it's an idea worthy of the domain name. An idea worthy of the internet. Yeah. An idea that has a potential to be much bigger than anyone can really anticipate. And they're willing to actually tell you the idea because you've already said you're not going to sell it. And they might be worried that you want to find out what their big idea is so that you could charge them more for the domain name? No, I don't think so. I, I think at the end of the day, you're, look, I have a, uh, a need and they have a need. And at the end of the day, we, we, we just kind of little by little, it's just kind of like dating, you know? You, yeah. you just little by little, it, it just kind of gets there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you develop a relationship, you develop a trust, and and uh, you, usually they they uh, they'll research me and they find I'm a no bullshit guy and uh, they'll say okay look this is what I'm looking to do I got no money but I have an idea okay that's a starting point I can work with reality <laughs> right. I can't work with any of the other nonsense but if it look this is what I got this is where I'm at this is what I need and this is what I think I can do and this is how long I think it it can it'll take to be done yep and then and then it's just you know. I'm a businessman, and I've been doing it for a long time, and I usually have a pretty good idea. I mean, I'll throw obstacles at him. Well, 
what, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Well, if they come up with answers, then I know that it's well thought out. If they don't know, then okay, you can, we can all have dreams. Right. So let's say that they come up with a halfway decent idea. You like it. Maybe it could take off. Maybe it won't. You know, we've seen tons of businesses fail. Most businesses fail over the years. You, you just can't predict it in a lot of cases. How do you know whether you're going to sell it to them and take a piece of the equity or whether you're going to lease it to them for $1,000, $2,000 a month? Well, each deal has um, their own parameters. There's things that everyone can do and can't do will do and won't do, yeah. uh, what's important to them and what's important to me. And yeah. again, it just... Okay. So they may show up with a million dollars that they've gotten from their first round of funding and they may want to spend 500000 on the domain and you say, well, I could live with that if I can get a piece of the equity going forward because I like who's backing you and I like your idea. You may decide that that's the way you want to go or you may just say, hey, 1500 bucks and it's yours and I'll give you this amount of time to, to lease it before we renew the lease. Well, I think the, what I could say is every um, uh, domain is a, a unique asset, and every answer would be around that particular unique asset, depending what I envision is the highest and best use of it in the right hands. So, mm -hmm. does that make sense? It does, but you know, I think a lot of people look at their domains and say, "Well, nobody's contacted me in the past three years. I know it could be good in the right hands." But right now, it has what feels like zero value because nobody's contacted me about buying it. I, well, it pro probably is in a category defining domain name in the yellow pages. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we're focused on, and because they are approached all the time. And you know, look, it's true that the valuations of most people aren't going to match the valuation that I have. But I have a certain vision, and the world has come closer to my. A view of the world than then moved away from my view of the world. So, yeah. uh, you know, I can at least point to specific evidence. And then when you start looking at those numbers for the retail, $2,500 a square foot per yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. And, and so that works well for maybe women's clothing or purses.com or shoes.com or something like that. But specialties.com, like you own uh, specialties, I don't even know what specialties.com would have on a website. Are, uh, so I'm just asking for clarification because I know every single deal is different, Rick, but unless we get into like the nuts and bolts and show us uh, a couple of examples, people aren't going to be able to internalize what you're saying. And that's what I okay. want people to do. So well, is well, specialties, that, that's a great domain name, clearly, but is, is it a category defining domain name in the yellow pages? Of course. There, as a matter of fact, there's a whole industry for specialties. I mean, it's, it's a, a large industry. I mean, when you, uh, all the little premiums that you, you get at trade shows that they have big catalogs, those are all specialties. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so, and, th and that's just one group of specialties, but there's a whole uh, uh, organization and trade show just to that industry of specialties. Uh, okay, just my ignorance. I call those tchotchkes, but I know tchotchkes not yeah, in the, exactly. in the, no in the yellow pages. To, but no one knows how to spell tchotchkes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I understand specialties. So you're getting 300 type-ins per day. If I go to Google and I type in specialty items or specialties, it probably has, I don't know, I'm, I'm just throwing out a wild guess. Do you, maybe you know the number, the average cost per click to rank on Google? No. So what would you, knowing that it has 300, 300 type-ins per day, how would you value that lease to somebody who wants to, uh, uh, to own it? You know, you've said in the past that, uh, that, that somebody that wants to lease it, excuse me. You've said that it all depends on how much does it cost to acquire a customer. Do you, do you start the conversation there? No, I think it it depends on on, on their circumstance, what they're going to do with it, what's their idea, and and, and uh, how long is the term? You know, what's their exit strategy? Do I mean? Not all the people want to buy the domain name. They just want to lease it forever. I mean, that is a big thing, but I, I would say that's the single uh, most surprising thing is the, the lease that they want to lease it for 10, 20, 30 years and longer. But I don't want to lock myself into a 10 year lease without a review <coughs> because, look, again, I'll point to Hong Kong and Fifth Avenue, and these prices are going to move closer to those prices because at the end of the day, 
Bet.com could be more valuable than their store right. in Times Square or Fifth Avenue or or wherever. Right, and, and you're maintaining ownership of the dot-com during a lease term. So while they're building out their businesses and getting sales every day and having type-in customers come to it, you're essentially increasing the value of your property as well. Just like in Times Square, as more people come in and more people make purchases and the and the economic uh, um, pool in Times Square increases, the value of the property increases. Sure, the same thing. Or a restaurant that takes over a piece of land that's been vacant for 50 years, all of a sudden he builds a restaurant. Okay, he may go out of business and the next guy takes over. Um, but, but, you know... It, it's, a, it's all based on circumstance. That's why sure. everyone says, well, do you have a model lease? Well, there is no model lease because every circumstance is going to be different. You have elements of the lease that are, <coughs> excuse me, you have elements of the lease that are the same, but the circumstances for each are different. Yeah. What they're looking for it, out of it is different. Um, you know, just look, the demeanors and the personalities of, of each person is, is different. Um, I you know, the, the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. So yeah. if I'm going to go with a guy that has no money, well, I want a bigger piece of the action because, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the risk. That sure. Yeah, ba- you know, back happened. in the um, boom days, uh, pre-2000, when all these dot-coms were getting funded and taken over, the landlords of all these properties were leasing them out for more and more money and taking larger deposits and forcing the the uh, tenants to do all the Im- tenant improvements that they wanted because they know, although they're getting, you know, uh, uh, $10,000 a month right now from this dot com, they could be out of business tomorrow and then they have to go and refill it with somebody else. So do they take $10,000 with the dot com per month or do they get, you know, a, a business that's been operating for five years and get them in at 7500 and have a longer term, probably more conservative tenant? Well, that's a decision that each business and business owner has to make with the conditions and 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 the evolution of what's going on i mean yeah i mean we, we wouldn't even be having this conversation a few years ago because everyone would be laughing it's just oh come on this is ridiculous i'm not here you're just paying eight dollars a month a year for the domain name why would i possibly give you well the reason that you would possibly give me x amount of dollars is because it's in your self-interest to give me x amount of dollars I'm pissing away customers, and they can be your customers. And then we get back to the original thing. How much is the value for each sector for a new customer, whether it be a one-time customer or a lifetime customer? Mm -hmm. And until that's the question they need to ask. It has nothing to do with what I'm asking or my price. It has to do with the answer to that question. And sometimes the domain name, I mean, look, I mean, I rag on SEO all the time, but I only rag on SEO because if you have a park domain, you don't start doing SEO. If you have a mini site, it's kind of ridiculous to do SEO. On the other hand, if you have a real site, then there's no problem with SEO. That, that, that's part of the game. You know, it's just how you look at it. So some people know that, that, that those keywords are going to be very valuable to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, what kind of lease term do you look for on your domains, Rick? What do you do? Uh, do you always try and push for one year lease with a renewal upon mutual uh, uh, agreement, or do you like five year lease terms? I would say um, so far the um, most of the people have wanted a longer term than I'm willing to give. Okay, so that's been uh, so. Right now, I would say. A three to five year lease with a, an option for another three to five years, but you know there has to be something to define the market because what's going to happen in the next three to five years, is, things are going to explode in value. I mean, absolutely, and then people are going to. Re- so I don't want to be you know uh, leasing property at like a nineteen twenty rate when it's twenty twenty. Right. So I have to protect myself uh, against that. To me, it's 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 a just when it's going to happen, and you know whether it's one year or three years or four years or two years. You know, I've been watching it from an embryo from zero and no chance of it happening to where we're basically at the doorstep of it happening. Mm-hmm. So when that happens and it becomes accepted and people understand it, the prices are going to go through the roof because sure. they're all paying through the nose through Google when they're paying five, ten, twenty-five dollars for one lead. Are you kidding me? 
So business property leases, like if I go physically lease a business location, I may lease it for um, three years initial term with the right upon mutual agreement to renew it for another three years. And, and there may be a clause that you as the landlord have the ability to raise the rent 2% per year if you want upon serving me notice, um, things like that. Is that is that typically what you've done as well? Or do you just wait for the end of the initial three to five year term to, to readjust pricing? Well, first of all, the 2% is a little low for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, you know, again, given that the value is going to increase a lot the way I view life, um, most of the um, leases have a built-in 15 to 25 percent, or even uh, uh, 500 to 1,000 to 5,000 dollar monthly increments that will go up after X amount of time. Mm -hmm. And look, at that point, we can always renegotiate. There's a market. It's like anything else. You know, we, you know, you can put any number you want, but after the five years, you know, both people are going to. Parties are just like if you had a shopping center lease and market conditions are bad, you're going to try to renegotiate for a uh, lower lease rate, maybe for a longer term. Right. On the other hand, if the things are good, it could be the shoe is on the other foot. So, again, there, there, everything I do has a real world parallel. Every single thing I do is based on a real world parallel. And that's why I arrive at whatever conclusions and decisions I come to. Sure. And so if you're leasing a domain for, say, a five-year initial term, do you have a clause that said there uh, that the uh, lessor is um, responsible for paying that lease amount every month regardless of whether or not they use it or not? Or can they walk away at any point from the deal? Well, anyone can walk away at any point. I mean, the lease is a lease. <laughs> People break the leases all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I will say... Um, that in more um, uh, higher value uh, domains and deals that uh, we use escrow.com mm -hmm. and uh, that way everyone's protected and they can either hold the paper for the transfer or not if there's going to be a transfer mm -hmm. or uh, if uh, there's a default in the rent then uh, they may or may not be involved with uh, you know things. Yeah. So what's the process, Rick? You mentioned that you posted up uh, an initial blog post about joint ventures and what you're trying to do with it. Um, we've talked about what kind of domains you're looking for. You said you got inundated with uh, a, a bunch of people's lists which weren't category defining domain names. Um, what is the process going forward? Do you want people to, uh, to email you and then what should they expect? Well, I, I want them to understand what we're looking for, and, and uh, you know, I understand it's uh, a sliver of the market, but that's that's the only place this is going to work. This isn't going to work with, uh, with with other domains, and I don't, yeah. I'm not going to look. All right, I so let me, let me make sure that I've got that defined, So, because I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to come on here and, and promote you and what you're doing, as well as educating the world on how you're doing it if they want to do it on their own, but I don't want to waste your time with a bunch of people contacting you after the show saying, hey, Rick, look at my 300 premium category defining domain names that I just registered last week. <laughs> so you want, it's got to be a, a definition, a, a, a category in the phone book or like a category in the phone book. So plumbers and and physicians and um, optometrists and, and things like that. But you'll also tack on certain descriptors like Maryland or Seattle or for the geos. But I think even more important to that is that you want traffic on those domain names. And if there's no traffic and it's not potentially in the yellow pages, then that's not a fit. That's exactly right. And those two criteria will, will eliminate 99% of everybody everybody emailing you domain names. I know no one wants to hear about this, but it's all about type in traffic, folks. I mean, if not, if not one person out of 7 billion people can wake up in the morning and think of your domain name to type it in, whether it's once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year, right. there's nothing there. I mean, it's just... <laughs> okay, so let me, I, you know, I, I, I emailed you when I asked you to come on the show and, and do this, and I emailed you one of my domain names because I wanted to see if you would just say, no, that, that doesn't fit at all. And I want to use more concrete examples because I know the data and I want to get your input on it, not that I want to promote anything that I own. But one of them was seoconsultant.com, which Fine. it, that, so I know how much you hate SEO, but it is a growing industry. I have a lot of, an you know, industry. 
Yeah. It's an industry. Someone out there could say, you know what? I want to be the SEO consultant on the planet, okay? Right. I'm the only one, and you know what? It has X amount of dollar value to me, okay? So I can put myself in the shoes of somebody needing or wanting a domain like that. Right. Now, my only, you know, I don't want to sell or at least $100 domain names. And I'm not saying that would be one. I think that could probably get more because... You know, but it, maybe it's a $250 a month domain name. How much is it worth to a guy that says, okay, I want to set up shop at SEO Consultant, and that's what I want to be known throughout the world? Well, I think $250 is a pre pretty reasonable number and maybe even a little bit more. Because now, you any, made that number not even – I didn't even tell you any any stats from Google, no, how much people are paying stats. cost per click. I didn't I even tell you my stats. traffic. I don't need any stats. <laughs> I know – I know it's category defining. I know there's someone out there that could need, that could need it, could want it, could desire it. It's a possibility. Just like I could look at 99% of other domains and say there's not a person on this earth that's ever going to need, want, or desire that. Right. And then I put a value on it. And then after I do all that, I may go to Google and look up and see how many searches it had. And I'll look up to see who's advertising. If no one is advertising, it shows me this probably isn't a very active category. And if 100 people are advertising, it's like, oh my God, this is, this is a treasure trove. Right. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's all about differentiate, differentiating ourselves from one another and from one business to another. Mm -hmm. And that's what domain names are about. How do I differentiate myself from the competition, from the next guy, make myself more memorable? So when every, it, you know, it's like I could look at a list of 100 no domains in 10 or 12 seconds and pick out the one that may have value or none at all. And, and I don't know how to explain it. It's just... When I see it, I know it. But see, that's funny because you say it's all about differentiation, which that's branding. Like you want people to remember your brand. And, and just a minute ago, we were talking about the leads that are coming in. Like I know 20 people per day visit SEOconsultant.com. They may be looking for an SEO consultant. Right. So, but, and it is branding. It is branding. But, but branding isn't just your name. It's also sales. Branding is, oh, I use SEOconsultants.com. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, that's what branding is. Oh, who do you use for that? SEOconsultants.com. Opening up a page and seeing SEOconsultants.com on a right. banner. That's branding. But they get branding mixed up with sales. It's sales. At the end of the day, you can brand yourself to death. If you never make any sales, you're dead, right? Right. On the other hand, you can have no brand. And if you have plenty of sales, you're living good. Yeah. So, Someone's got it upside down, and it ain't me. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about your process, Rick, because you're doing this with your own domain names. You've said you're willing to do it for other people. I think I have a domain name. I email you. You take a look at it. You said, yes, it's got um, – uh, it could define a category in the in the phone book. Uh, Mike says it's got type-in traffic. I go to Google. You go to Google. You type it in. There's uh, 20 people that are advertising for that phrase. You're like, hey, I think I could lease it out maybe – $100 a month or $250 a month. Let's just assume for a moment that that's high enough for you to actually spend your time on. What's the next step on the process? Well, look, uh, again, like I said, every single deal is going to be unique. There will be no two deals alike. There will be uh, deals that are similar, so we'll have starting points. Yeah. Obviously, people want to lease it. Obviously, they want to lease it for a term. Usually, the, the next step is for me to ask questions. Okay. How are you going to use it? What's your intent? What, I want to make sure. Oh, okay, let me let me back up for a second because I don't think I was clear enough, Rick. So if I decide that I want to work with you, you are going to represent me and my domain name, and you're going to get a lease deal done for me. Is that correct? Is that what you're suggesting as, as at Joint domain, Ventures? Uh, you, you, now you're talking as the domain owner. As and the domain talk, owner, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna put a value on your domain, what it is monthly, and yes, I'm gonna negotiate in your behalf. That's okay. what you're getting from Joint Ventures. You get me negotiating on your behalf, and you're knowing that I ain't going to leave as much money on the table as a lot of people because I, you know, I only want good deals. Right. I don't need to make a deal so I can make a 10% commission. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, I want uh, long-term revenue streams. Yep. So if I do a deal on a domain for just $1,000 a month and that deal lasts 10 or 20 years, I'm getting a hell of a return 
for for what I put in, and at the same time, you as a as a domain owner is getting a hell of a value because you're taking a domain that's probably making thirty cents a day, and now it's making two hundred and fifty dollars a month, right. which is thirty times more than it was making. <laughs> That's a good return. Yeah, but how does the yeah. process work? Do I do I redirect all the traffic on SEO Consultant to jointventures.com? No, not at all. <clears throat> not at all. I just want to list the domain name. Okay. Now, if you want, if the, if the page is parked, you could do what I do, which is run a banner on top of the parked page that says, this great domain may be available for lease or joint venture. Mm -hmm. And then click here and it can go to joint ventures and then we pitch them. Or it can even go to your email address and you can give me the lead. Okay. But so I get the lead or I send it over to jointventures.com joint and they uh, contact you and they say, hey, I'm interested in leasing this domain name. And then you'll do – do I need to sign a contract with you that you're representing me, Rick? Or do you deal with – you know? Yeah. You do, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll have a because there has to be some kind of a term. Do you right. want me to have the domain for six months, for a year? You know what happens if you sell it? Blah blah blah. It's best if it isn't for sale. But if it is out there for sale, please have it at a very high price. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it makes the lease negotiation more more palatable. Yeah, so it's much okay, easier. Okay, so so. I, as the domain owner, would contact you. We would sign an agreement that you're representing me. Uh, we would get leads, all the leads to you. You would negotiate on my behalf to lease it out. Um, and then do you do all the paperwork? Do you do you sign yes. the lease with the with the company that wants to lease it? Yes. Yeah, okay. We go through the whole nine yards of all that. And when it's all done, depending on the transaction, either we hold the paper. Look, it depends who the people are involved also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we hold the paper or escrow.com, depending on what they want, what they're comfortable with. Uh -huh. Most people are just, you know, they, they know the routine. As long as they pay, they got the, the domain is pointed wherever they want it pointed, and they're going to do whatever they want to do with it. Right. And if they stop paying, it's going to not be pointed there after a while. Right. Okay. And for providing this service, negotiating on my, my behalf, monitoring the transaction, um, I assume that you charge a commission for that. We do it all for free. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> uh, no, we, 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 our, our fee is 20%, uh, which is in line with what the uh, auction houses are getting. Uh -huh. And it's palatable. I mean, you know, like I always say, everything is a formula. This is a palatable enough formula where your benefit is substantial. Our benefit is noticeable. And at the same time, there's enough room in it where we can hire brokers to actively pursue end users and where they can make their 5 and 10% or we can have an affiliate program and they can make a few points. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's about and uh, we, we think we have a good formula. And, you know, again, think of it. If you have a domain making 30 cents a day, $9 a month, and I'm coming to you with a $250 client, Fifty dollars, I think. Two, you come out two hundred dollars, one hundred ninety-one dollars a head. Still a pretty good deal. Yeah. And say, and and you know, it isn't just a flat lease because that because as we're leasing, we're also there's an end game to it. They want to buy it. They want to pursue it. They want to know what happens if we hit a home run, and and that's where it gets really interesting because that's where points are available. That's where you know. It's a startup. They need help at the beginning getting something off the ground. And one of the biggest helps you can give them is a great category killing domain name that makes them maybe more important or more impressive or just gives them a, a little bit of, yeah. you know, it's like a feather and a fence. It just puts the wind at their back just enough to, to get them over. Yeah, definitely. What's the minimum lease amount per month that you'd consider, uh, um, you know, representing, Rick? You know, to make it worth your while, clearly. I think probably five hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred. I don't know, five hundred, not so much. I think a thousand to fifteen hundred and above. I mean, some. Yeah. Of, I, I envision some domains to be leased for tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. a month. Sure. Yeah, clearly, if it's twenty thousand dollars a month or or more, or you know, a thousand dollars a month, twelve thousand dollars a year, that's big enough where you can make a nice commission for negotiating over a long period and get your return on doing that negotiation and the legal paperwork and setting it up with escrow and making sure all the money comes in every single month. There's a lot to be to be done on a regular basis. For, for anything to, to work, everyone has to come out a winner. 
Right. <clears throat> the minute there's one loser in the chain, everyone loses. Mm -hmm. So you come out as a winner because you wait, make 10, 20, 50, 100 times more than you were making. I come out a winner because I'm, I'm creating opportunity out of thin air and walking away with 20% yep. and hopefully a big payday at the other end because I like to construct deals like candy.com and property.com and I and you know I just like deals like that yeah and uh, then of course the end user uh, can be the biggest winner so everyone up and down the chain is a winner and look some of them are gonna work and some of them aren't gonna work but that's what life is about is just trying to make things happen if you hit pay dirt oh my goodness I mean yeah. how many Facebook's do you have to hit in your life I mean you don't have to hit too many so if I own SEOconsultant.com, I know I get type in traffic. I, uh, you know, I, I think that it could be a, a category in the uh, phone book, but I'm not sure if I if the lease amount is a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars per month. Like I just don't have a, a good gut feel about that. Can I just email you directly, Rick, and ask you, hey, Rick, is this does this one domain or these two domains meet your threshold? And listen, I wouldn't even lock myself into the $250 a month because the first thing I have to do is study the sector, okay? What does an SEO consultant charge, okay? So how much is the value of that client? If you're getting a five grand for an SEO consultant, wait a second, that isn't a $250 domain anymore. That's worth <clears throat> a lot more. Yeah. So you know, as, as I look at it, uh, each point of a domain name, I'm looking at all kinds of uh, di different things because I'm looking for the lifetime value of a new client. And an, an SEO consultant, I mean, okay, if you hit one out of 20 a day, what does that mean to a guy that's a true SEO consultant that uh, is going to get repeat business? I mean, it could be right. worth much, much more. So is it but fair for me to... Is it fair for me to look at the sector and say, well, on Google, it, it has um, search volume in the U.S. of, let's say, 10000 The average cost per click is $16. So I know if I'm buying – if, if a customer is buying ads to advertise their SEO consulting for $16 a click, for every 10 clicks, they're maybe going to get a uh, one lead through their website. So it's $160 per lead then. And that $160 is probably going to turn into like three to $5,000 contract over the course of the next year to two years. Is that a fair way for me to look at it as an owner of a domain name to try and sure. see how much the lease value is? Sure. Any metric that you can use to put any kind of a value whatsoever on it <clears throat> is going to be much closer than most people are, are figuring right now because they're not putting that value on it. What is the, the potential lifetime value of a customer? That's one of, the first, uh, one of the first questions I ever asked when I got online. What's the value of a click worth if I sell a $20 million jet? I mean, you know, the, the value of a visitor is in direct proportion to the product or service you're selling. Mm -hmm. I said that from the very first statement that I ever made online. And that's it. That is it. So yeah. each sector I study, what's the value? Well, you know, whatever it is. For, and I've hit all sectors. See, I can quantify this because I went from penny candy to property with millions of dollars to porno. So I stretch it out to the three <laughs> the world, basically. I mean, I absolutely, and, and then worked from there to try to, to diamonds and all types of gold, mm -hmm. all types of different sectors that I knew were profitable, yeah. that, you know, that one sale could be huge, huge, could be almost life changing. But what I want to know is once I know the value of a new customer, let's say that I own candy.com and I know a customer is going to come one time per year and they're going to spend $200 on average. Once I, or I know that SEO consultant is going to sell a contract for $2,000 a year. If I know the value of a customer, how do I take that and figure out the lease amount per month of that domain name? You take a risk, okay? Okay, there's as no formula. Man, as a businessman, you take a risk. So one of the first listings we have is rings.com, R-I-N-G-S. It gets 10,000 visitors in November and December, okay? People looking for engagement rings, okay? You take a risk. Okay, how do you take a risk? Well, you say, okay, I'm a jewelry store. And I asked, geez, $60,000 a year for a domain rings.com 
and I'm going to get tens of thousands of visitors. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to strike out by paying 60000 okay? I'm going to get some return. Now the question is, does my return hit the 60000 or does it far exceed the 60000 mm -hmm. Well, as business people, that's, what's called, that's what it's all about. You gamble, say, you know what? I know enough about my business that if I get one or two customers a day from that, I'm going to clear my sixty grand with no problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make uh, uh, new clients. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And guess what? If I'm wrong and I really screw it up, then you know what? I still probably made thirty or forty grand. And okay, I lost ten or twenty grand. Okay, so at the end of the year, I have a decision. Did I learn anything from losing the ten or twenty grand so that I can make it back the next year? Or do I say, okay, I tried it, it didn't work? Or do I say, Rick, those numbers don't work? But if I was leasing it for three thousand a month, then it works for me. Yeah. Okay, well that could be the conversation too. Or it work where it's wildly successful, and the guy only wants to lock me in for the next hundred years, because those are the options. But yeah, a guy has to take a risk. I mean, SEO consultants. You know, let's say it's five hundred dollars a month. Okay, so now it's six thousand dollars a year. So tell me, how good an SEO consultant guy could be? If he wouldn't put, uh, pony up six grand a year to let everyone know he's the guy on the internet that's an SEO consultant, <laughs> hey, it's really a mindset. Right. You know, the only way you can make money is being prepared to lose the money. So you you're willing to take a risk, and at the same time, you you buy time, you exclude your competition from finding out what's going on, mm -hmm. and to see if it works. And if it works, you're off to the races, and it's life changing. Right. That's the point. It can be life-changing. And the same guy that gave me rings.com gave me roofs.com and slogans.com. And they're all category-defining domain names. And that's what I want. And that's the only ones that will work. And I can't promise anything to anyone else unless it meets that threshold. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'll say. It's either it's like a, a, a light switch. It's either on or off. There's really very little in between. It'll either be attractive to a third party yeah. and a third party will say, geez, I can do something great with it if I only own this domain name or it won't. So when you sign a contract to represent those domain names for uh, for your client, Rick, do you proactively reach out to the companies that are advertising in that space to, to present them this opportunity, this lease opportunity? Or do you wait for people to uh, uh, inbound leads in order to market it? Well, until now, it's always been inbound leads because I was in no rush and the market hadn't come to where I believed it would come to. And, uh, but, but that's why we have enough of a spread in my formula where we can hire proactive people. And there's enough people that are unemployed that can use 5 and 10%. And th this is not a hard sell. If you have a great, it's only a hard sell if you're selling crap. Okay, if you're selling crap, believe me, it's a hard sell. Yeah. But if you're selling something that has value, and you got to remember, so you're, you're um, selling a lease that may be only a thousand, two thousand, five thousand. This isn't a high level decision. Mm -hmm. This isn't where you have to go to the board of directors. This is the advertising department can make this decision. The sales department can make this decision. The marketing department can make this decision. Uh, probably five other departments in a in a, in, a, in a given uh, entity can make this right. decision, and, and 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 that has great value because all of a sudden all these obstacles are gone. It's it isn't a decision that ten people have to agree on. It's one division has to agree on it. Right, and if it is coming from the marketing person or the marketing budget, they can redirect that domain name to a landing page that's specific to it to gather leads. They can use it on billboards and in commercials, just like companies do for their Facebook profiles. And who knows if Facebook is going to be around in two years, you know? They, they may, look, they may lease a, uh, a domain for one Super Bowl spot that they need for the year. They're going to only use that domain name. They want to know exactly, they need to measure exactly what their return is. And boom. So, yeah. you know, you, you never know what someone else's need is. Yeah. Do you offer a purchase option on every single lease or, or again, it depends. People, some people just want to lease it and they'll just enter a three-year term and, and it has a lease amount. Um, there will be a percentage of people that will want some kind of a lease option, though per it, it, 
Purchase option, you mean? Purchase option. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, but not as much as you as you would think. Mm. Um, and and, uh, and I tell them right out. Well, the only way we can do that is I have to give you my inflated price of what I would sell that domain for right now. Not even hesitating and realizing the domain is going up in the future, not down in the future. Right. And look, they're absolutely free to disagree with me, but no one can point a gun in my head and make me do the deal because I believe a certain belief and that's it that's what i believe yeah. so uh the, the it hasn't been a problem because they know if it works they, they want basically write a first refusal that's probably the single biggest uh thing that they want if 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 uh, next week someone comes along and wants to buy that domain name they want the right of, of first refusal mm-hmm. yeah so a bona fide off, offer they would get, let's say, 48 or 72 hours to match or exceed the offer. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, how many domain names do you currently have leased through your portfolio, Rick? Not not counting uh, um, sales that you have equity in, but just pure leases? Um, I would... The ones that are... We're putting... In, some of them don't go into effect until January. Okay. Um, but I would say total right now about 10 to 12. Mm. Wow. So, right. you know, it's something I've been able to duplicate. And, you know, I always say once doesn't count. Twice <laughs> a stopped watch is, is right twice a day. <laughs> and you have to make at least the third sale to someone you don't know for anything to be valid. Yeah. And what's the least amount that you're personally leasing your domains for per month? Well... Any, you don't need to name the domain, but like, what's do you do you know offhand the the least amount? I'm, I'm trying to put some realism to it. Like, if you say, I, "Hey, I'm I, leasing I, one of my domain names for a hundred dollars a month," like, I don't I don't want people to think that even the domain king only leases for fifteen hundred or ten thousand dollars a month. Right now, the lowest domain name is uh, five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. But that was one of my first deals too, so I didn't know what I was doing. So he's getting a good deal. So if he's watching, <laughs> all right. You stated on your, um, uh, you know. But before I uh, even get to my final question here, Rick, um, I want to point out that uh, I just attended the traffic conference in October in um, in Florida. Had a great time, like I did the previous year. And I wanted to mention that you have traffic coming up on sort of the West Coast, not really the West Coast, but closer to us on the West Coast, Las Vegas, May 29th through June 1st, which I'm attending, and I'm looking forward to that event. Um, and hopefully you'll have a, a panel about leasing maybe during during that event as well. Well, that would be nice. Never even thought about it, but uh, sounds good to me. <laughs> that would be great. And then, of course, if anybody is... <laughs> to me, great idea. <laughs> and if anybody is uh, um, watching this interview and saying, oh, I wish Mike would have asked this, and I feel uncomfortable asking Rick in the comments in public, buy your ticket now. It's the cheapest it's going to be for Traffic Las Vegas. And uh, and get out there, and you'll have access to Rick. You can ask him all those personal questions. And the things that I love about, about your conference, Rick, is that Everybody is so accessible there. You know, if I want to sit down with you and I want to pick your brain about something, yeah, you're busy because you got a million things going on in the conference, but there's always time during um, happy hours or socials to, to have conversations like that. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, our attendees know each other for years. They, uh, they, they know new faces. They're, they, they go over to new faces. They spend their time. They want to know what they're doing. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's a, a very – interesting group of very successful dynamic people that have come uh, from many different backgrounds to converge on domaining and that's it just makes it very special I love it yeah me too and, and as a newcomer I agree with all of that and people do come up and and uh, I've really enjoyed getting to know a lot of people in the industry and they're tremendously open as we've seen here on domain sherpa.com where we ask people to come in and share a lot of their their past experiences. So final question, Rick, in the next three years, your stated goal is to have over a hundred leased domains making $1,500 per month each. That's a one and a half million dollar per month revenue stream. Is jointventures.com your vehicle for realizing this goal? Or do you think that the sales force that you're going to be hiring it, uh, to lease out these domains is going to be critical. How? What's your game plan for going out and doing additional marketing promotion to build up this 
this business around leasing and joint ventures for domain names? Well, first of all, the goal for 100 um, leases was strictly before we even thought of doing this for anyone but myself. Oh, this really? This personal goal of myself was to lease 100 of my domain names mm -hmm. by my 20th anniversary, okay, which gave me plenty of time to do it, and hopefully I would do it sooner than, than that. And, uh, you know, that would give me a pretty nice uh, revenue stream every year. Yeah. And... Uh, and, 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 you know, it was probably a week or two after that that we started, all of a sudden we found that there was a demand from other domainers that say, geez, this would really work for me. And, uh, you know, that only came about because we started getting uh, uh, emails from people, geez, do you have this type of uh, traffic and do you have this type of a domain? And I, you know, my portfolio, there was nothing there to fill. It was like, okay, wait a second. I, I can use some other inventory here because we're, we, we have the people now let, let's try to match them. So yeah. that's how that came about. Great. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I met uh, I met a gentleman um, that has a fantastic portfolio. One that when he told me some of the great domain names that he had, uh, I couldn't believe it. And I thought, well, I need to drop everything else I'm doing and help build out some of these domains. I met him last year at your conference. I met him again this year at your conference, and we caught up again. And and I'm gonna give him a call and make sure that he knows that this video is out because. He has had some difficulties uh, monetizing these domain names, even though they're category defining. And, and I think they would be perfect fit for um, this lease option that you're offering. Well, th th that's why I think it's going to be such a, a winner, because I know there are so many guys out there that have just great domain names and their value is being locked up. And, and I'm, I know there's an end user for every mm -hmm. great domain name. There may not be an, an end user for pigeon uh, droppings, but there's definitely an end user for great <laughs> domain names. And it's, it's just about matching them up. And, uh, you know, everything happens in time, and people are getting more and more sophisticated, and they're really starting to pay attention to the numbers. And as we go into 2013, uh, they have to pay attention to the numbers because their entire livelihood and businesses are going to be at stake if they don't pay attention to the numbers. Definitely. So if I didn't do uh, as comprehensive a job asking questions of Rick and, and asking follow-up questions, please post your additional comments uh, below the video and, and I'll ask Rick to come back and answer as many as he can. Um, as always, if people want to follow you on Twitter, Rick, like I do, they can follow at Domain King. Uh, Rick Schwartz, Domain King, founder of TargetedTraffic.com and the Targeted Traffic Conference, of course and erealestate.com. Thank you for coming on the show again, presenting your experience and knowledge on leasing and monetizing domain names. And thank you for being a repeat domain Sherpa. Thank you so much for inviting me and uh, look forward to the next time. Keep it up. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.